Okay, so today we're going to be talking about the areas of rectangles and parallelograms, which should be kind of a review from past, okay, but we're going to kind of do a couple problems using all of our new ways, like we're going to be using the Pythagorean theorem every once in a while, or we'll be solving for a variable instead of just finding the area of rectangles and parallelograms. So first, let's write down all of this vocabulary, maybe on um, your conjecture sheet or on another sheet of paper. The first vocab term is going to be area, right? And that's the measure of the size of the interior of the figure. Okay, so everything that makes up the inside of a two-dimensional shape. Okay, so if we're talking rectangles, it's everything on the inside of the figure. Make sure you pause the video if I'm going too fast through the vocabulary. Second is the base, okay? And a base we use as a side of a polygon. For example, if we use a triangle, usually we think of the base being the bottom, okay? But we could also consider this to be our base as well, okay? So the base is not always at the bottom, okay? It could be on the side of any polygon. Altitude. Altitude we talked way back in our um, construction unit, chapter three. Okay, altitude is the perpendicular segment from the vertex to the base or the line or the plane containing the base. So perpendicular is key. Okay, the altitude is always perpendicular to the opposite side of a figure. Okay, it's very similar to the height. Okay, and altitude and height are kind of interchangeable. Okay, altitude is more of the geometry term for height. Also, I want you to note that the altitude or the height might be on the outside of the figure. Okay, so it might not always be on the inside. It could be on the outside of the figure, especially if we have an obtuse triangle like this. Okay, so the altitude is always perpendicular to the base. The height, okay, height, I told you height and altitude are very similar, okay, the height is the length of what the altitude is, okay, we kind of use altitude as um, what we call it and height is the actual length or the measure. So you'll kind of hear them interchangeable throughout this unit, okay, but height is very similar to the altitude. Rectangle area conjecture, our first conjecture, okay, for area, and the area of a rectangle is given by the formula, I hope most of us already know this, A equals base times height, okay, where A is the area, B is the length of the base, and H is the height of the rectangle. Okay, so if we have a rectangle here, okay, base, times the height would give us our area. Second conjecture is the area of a parallelogram. Okay, a parallelogram is very similar to a rectangle, okay, but they're just kind of like tilted or slanted a little bit. But the formula is the exact same. A equals base times height, where A is the area and B is the length of the base and H is the height. Okay, so for those of us who don't really remember what a parallelogram looks like, okay, it's kind of like a rectangle but slanted off to the side. Okay, and the base we'll just say is the bottom. Okay, and remember the height has to be perpendicular to the base. Okay, so usually you'll see it drawn in kind of like a dotted line. Okay, you could also see the height off to the side this way, okay, we'll have kind of some dotted. So you'll see it both ways where it might be on the outside of the figure or it might be on the inside of the figure, okay, but you always, for a parallelogram, it's key to make sure that the height and the base are perpendicular. All 
All right, next I'm just going to go through some examples. Okay, some of them are going to be very easy to start with. Okay, so bear with me. Okay, we're going to start by finding the area of this rectangle. Five is the height times the base, which is eight, okay, which equals 40. Now, if we're talking units, when we're dealing with area, okay, we're going to have centimeters, but area shows that with a squared on the units. Okay, so centimeters squared. Anytime you're dealing with area, you always have to put that two next to it. So if somebody's looking at it, they know you're talking about the area and not uh, the length or whatever it may be. All right, second one. Okay, this one we're going to kind of break apart a little bit to make it a little easier on ourselves. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by drawing my line this way. Okay, and I'm going to find the area of both of these figures here. So I notice that this rectangle here has a base of 4 and a height of 2, which makes it 8 centimeters squared. And then this bottom one down here has a base of 2 and a height of 4, so it also is 8 centimeters squared. Okay, when you have a figure like this, please make sure you add together the two areas to get the total area. So your answer should have been 16 centimeters squared. All right, for this one, we want to find the area of our rectangle. And notice that we're only given the base and we're not given the height. But some things that we know about rectangles is that all of their angles are 90 degrees. Okay, maybe some of you already noticed that we have a right triangle drawn in. So think about, how could I find my height if I have this right triangle? I hope that we said the Pythagorean theorem. I'm going to do x squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared to find my height. Because remember, area equals base times height. I have my base, but I don't have my height. Okay, so I'm going to do 12 squared and 13 squared. Okay, next I'm going to subtract 169 minus 144. So I have x squared equals 25. And then square root to get rid of the squared. So my height ends up being 5. Maybe some of you noticed that it was a Pythagorean triple, 5, 12, and 13. So now I'm going to plug in my base and my height. So area ends up being 60 centimeters squared. And I do need to see all of this work shown. Okay? So whether um, on your homework or in your review sheets, okay, I need to see this work shown. Okay, especially using the Pythagorean theorem and then plugging it back into the formula. All right, next we're going to get into a couple parallelogram ones. Okay, kind of bear with me here for this first one. Remember, I always write down the formula first. Even if it seems silly, still write it down. Okay, so we have area equals base times height. My base is 15 and my height is 8. So if I multiply 15 times 8, I get 120. And then inches squared for your final answer. All right, for this one, I try to trick you up a little bit to see um, if you knew which one the base and which one the height was. So we're obviously going to use the 2 and the half for our base for this one. I'm going to write down the formula first. Okay, so my base is two and a half. And if you remember, the height always has to be perpendicular to the base. So that means I'm going to use 1.8 for my height. When I multiply those together, I get four and a half meters squared. All right, the next one, okay, again, tried to trick you up a little bit. 
Okay, I kind of moved around the height. Okay, but for this one, if you want to try and do it on your own, pause the video first. So we get A equals 15 times 5. Okay, when we multiply 15 times 5 together, we get 75, and then centimeters squared. Okay, so I like to see this work shown, even if it seems simple, and you can maybe do it in your head. Please show your work. Right now we're getting into a couple. Great right, for this one. Notice that you were just given the perimeter. You were not given area, so that's a little different than what we've done in the past. Okay, so we know we're going to assume that this is a rectangle. Okay, I want you to pause for a minute and decide how you would solve this type of problem. All right, so how I would solve it, I know it's a rectangle, so I know the opposite sides are congruent. So I'm going to assume that this side is 16 as well. So I'm going to take 56 and subtract the two 16s from it. So I get 24. And I know that these two sides here add up to 24. So if I divide 24 by 2, I end up with 12. Okay, so now I have all of my side lengths. Okay, now for trying to find the area, I'm going to take base times height. And I'm going to take 16 times 12. And I get 192 meters squared. All right, the next one, we're given the area. So last one we were given perimeter. This one we're given area. So I'm going to take a minute. I want you to pause the video and decide how you would solve it first. And then you can listen to how I would solve it. All right, so first, I'm given the area, so I'm first going to write area equals base times height. Okay, and we're trying to find the length or the base of it. Okay, they gave me the area, so I'm going to use 500. I'm going to plug that in for A, and I'm going to plug in B for my base and 20 for my height. Okay, so next, it's just solving, multiple step equation. Divide by 20 on both sides. So 500 divided by 20, I end up with 25 for my base. Now the units on this, let's talk about it. It's not area that they wanted us to find. It was the base. So my units are just going to be feet, not feet squared. Okay, And that's very important to check those units because we're going to be going back and forth between finding side lengths or dimensions versus finding area or even perimeter every once in a while. All right, please check Google Classroom and please complete the quizzes. There will be a code there for you.